Okay, you'll we'll see, okay. So this demonstration is when bagging out a combined facing, when you have a fold on the front and on the back. So the last video, there was an opening, so we could just simply put them round, sew the armholes, sew the necks, and pull them through the shoulders. But because we've got no, this is in one piece, not in two pieces, the front and the back. If you try and do that, you just end up with a twist, and you just keep trying to pull it through, and it doesn't work. So don't attempt it. Um, so just the same as we started last time, you join the facing at the shoulders, so you make like a yellow piece, and then you join the uh, bodice at the shoulders and then you just the same put wrong sides together and sew around the neck hole first so I'll start with that bit so you can see what I'm doing but when we were doing it last time we did it and it all was sewn all together but as I say this time it's not going to happen it's just a mini sample so we will sew around the neck. And I've done an interesting shape here just to show the importance of snipping into corners. So you sew past this by the seam amount, allowance amount, and you've got a point there when you come to it. So when you then keep the needle down and pivot round, the distance you've sewn past is your seam allowance. So now when I come and sew across around, carry on around the neck, you can see that is my seam allowance that I put on there. So the same here. So when I come from this raw edge, you don't stop at the raw edge, you then sew past your seam allowance. So normally you'd have like one and a half or one centimetre. So you can see there it's sewn past. And those would might have a drill hole, um, like a, a tailor's tack mark for you to sew, to, to show that that's where you've got to sew to. So I've got a few interesting little features on this neckline different shapes try not to stretch necks so you would apply interfacing to the facing so you'd have it in fabric and then you would have it in uh, interfacing stuck onto it and then seam neatening it all together afterwards so I've gone all the way around that neck now where I've got all of those tricky corners and things I need to snip into them because if I don't, I now will need to turn this the right way. Last time we carried on sewing with them right sides together, but we need to use the burrito method. But before I do that, I want to do my understitching around my neck. But if I just try and post that through, because of the nature of these corners, if I do that, that is not going to sit and lay flat. You have to, where you've got corners, snip into them and you have to snip right up if your scissors are nice and sharp right up you don't go through so sometimes you might um, want to stitch that twice because that might be a weak bit or as you come to the corners you might want to reduce your stitch length to the a bit smaller so that there's no concerns about it the stitching coming through but I'm just going to very quickly do that and again these corners as well I'm going to have to do the same in, in here and then any curves we have to snip into any curves and because these are inverted ones we don't need to worry about cutting triangles out but you can't but the ones here where that the other way around you might want to cut a section away so one goes will con convex concave I think <laughs> those ones because when you then turn this through to the and that pokes out with that shape if we hadn't have cut those away then because you see I've snipped them away when I then push them up look they then close together and close the gap so that's why we'd cut that way otherwise they'd be bulky there'd be more fabric there so you treat the hills with cutting them away and then the dips you just have to snip Right, so any different shapes like that and then any of there wherever there so if it's straight it's not a problem I've cut that V there so I don't need to snip there but as soon as it then goes so it starts curving up around the shoulder you then start snipping and as I say heels and dips the heels you cut the actual fabric triangle away but the dips you don't need to you just need to snip in then we can do the understitch which will help hold the facing onto the roll hold it down 
So we're just going to do an understitch. Now, where we've got these corners, we won't get that understitching on these corners. Um, when you're doing understitching, you're not going to be able to go near any of these Vs or anything. So don't worry about that. So understitching, refresher again, is where you're stitching the seam allowances onto the facings. Right, this is quite a small sample. So the seam allowance, always stitch your understitching from the top. Seam allowances to the right, and then I'm sewing onto the facing edge. So I'll start round at that from as near to the front V. If it was a real garment, it will be about three centimetres that you won't be able to sew. And then sort of pull it away so, because you don't want any pleats or anything like that. So doing the understitching. These are the, the finishing. This is the, uh, what you would expect from manufactured garments, closing it. And it's, these take as long as putting the actual thing together. But these are the skills and techniques that give you a high quality finished garment. So you can see I'm coming up to my corner. I'm not going to go round the corner, I'm just going to stop short of it with my understitching. And then I'll always snip your threads off, snip the one underneath, and then do the next one. Obviously, I've got different shapes and things going on here. So again, you might not be able to do understitching all the way around. On a bigger neck, it would be worth doing that. Go as near to these shapes as you can. You won't get in on those corners. But again, you don't want to be stretching it. This is just to help it roll to the inside of the garment when it's worn. And you can, at the end, it will all be bagged out and all be very, very neat. I'll just do another couple of bits. And that's on my next shoulder. Come around with the understitching. You can see these are little mini samples, so it doesn't feel like I'm doing much stitching, but on a proper garment, it will be worth it. And that's over the main shoulder, going over the shoulder on the long edge. Okay, so then once I've done all my understitching, I will take that to the iron. So where I've done my understitching, just push my machine out of the way, you can see I've done it in a contrast thread, which you wouldn't normally. So I haven't gone near my Vs because we want those actually to be dead on. And you can also see, because of the fabric I've used, why we have to snip that corner because it splays out. And that's when you get that nice sharp corner. If we hadn't have snipped it, it can't open out. You can see how much it has to open out and that's the same and again here where we just snipped them you can see that they're splaying out so when those were the ones that were dips we only had to do a, a snip but the ones with the hills if we hadn't have cut that triangle out they would overlap so they've pushed together and they're now butting up against each other so that gives you all your nice shapes and your nice corners so we have applied right we have sewn our facing on combined facing we haven't joined the side seams we've only done the two shoulder seams all right what we now need to do is sew these armholes right sides together but we can't do it when it was the other way around because we end up in a big twist so we have to be clever so they refer to this as the burrito method and but it's going across so it's different to the shirt yoke, which is a another burrito method. So burritos basically means you're rolling. I'm going to roll towards that armhole. This has to be the right way round. I've sewn those in. That's the wrong side. This is the good side of the garment. That neck is finished and ready. I am then rolling from the side seam, and I'm just basically focusing on rolling it tight okay because we just need to be able to stitch the other armhole without catching this 
So this is the, the bit that might be confusing. You need to put this armhole. We can't just sew those because it's on the wrong side. So we need to put right sides together. So we take our facing and we just flip that underneath. And now, because we've rolled that garment, we can pin that arm and sew that armhole without catching any of this. So I will do this, we'll do it again. And just like when we did the other demonstration, if when you're joining the side seams, you either sew right to the armhole, which I'll do on this one, or if you want to have the neater finish, you leave this bit first and you just sew between here and here, then we join the side seams and then we go back. So I'll do the both methods again first, just to show you a nice finish. So we, oh, Take our, I'm going to say this one the common way, where you go right to the ends. And again, you just have to make sure, if you've got a really narrow shoulder, all of this might be much more bunched up inside. You just have to make sure when you're sewing it that you are not catching what you've burritoed up inside. You're only sewing right sides together and you've pinned it or tacked it, however you work and you sew your armhole. So I'm just joining the facing and the garment armholes together. All right, right the way around so they fit. And this, this is how the, most people do it, they sew to the end. The other one I'm going to show you and we will not so right to the end. So again, we've got this armhole, which is a curve, and um, so therefore it will open up when you turn it through. So we need to snip, always cut all your threads off for health and safety as much as anything else. If you, you know, threads are like hairs and they can wrap round fingers and cut off circulation. So we always need to be very, very mindful of our construction especially if you're making for other people or children. So where there's a curve, snip into it so it allows it to open up and you get it to lie flat. Okay. And now the burrito is rolled up. It's fine. We just have to pull it through. So we have to go inside, find our garment, and we just pull it, and we pull it and we pull it and we keep pulling and we normally get into a bit of a panic at this point and go oh I've done it right you have faith and then you have sewn and completely bagged out that one side here right the way along all right then we will apply the under stitching just the same but you don't have to do this now I'll do it as a finished sample to shorten the video you won't get here you'll be able to under stitch this side as far as you can and then stop and then again this way start as far as you can you can get the machine and you don't want any puckering or anything and then do your under stitching so you will always have a gap on the one that's been rolled in burrito where there's no under stitching so we now just need to do the same yes this side's neatened that's okay. Now we've got one armhole fully neaten, one neck. We've just got this one to deal with. So exactly the same. We roll towards the armhole, nice and tight. You can see why you needed it tight. Okay, we now need to put these right sides together. So you need to sort of manipulate and hold. I tend to just, you could go that way round and flip it underneath. That's okay, it's the same principle. And then fiddle it. Once we've rolled it, I tend to just sort of, so there we are, I've just rolled that. We're putting them together over like that and sewing them round. All right, we, we just need to get them so that when they're rolled, you've got the facing on one side and the body on the other. So when we've rolled them, they're like this and they're flat together. So then we just want to roll it and it's sometimes easier to sort of hold the facing, let it hang like a bit of laundry, lay it flat, flip it towards you, 
then you know that that's your armhole. And then you, I just have, because I've just been right-handed, pin it round this way. If you're left-handed, you might do it slightly different. And then we're going to do repeat. Make sure you match your shoulders at the seams. Okay, make everything's really nice and accurate. Now, like I said, this time I'm not going to sew it right to the armhole because I want to finish that side seam last. I'm going to start in a bit just for a different um, way of finishing. So we're going around here. Okay, make sure that your seam allowances are open. It's all these little neat bits that there's no twists, no puckers, no folds. It really gives a high end. You know, it's folding there as I'm sewing, so I just lift the foot up and let it back down again. If I've done a bit, reverse a bit. That's okay. If it was a bit confusing, you know, reverse out, just like you do when you drive it. Just reverse and then come back and give it another go. Or you could stop and just re-sew over it. But always consider, don't just keep going with twists or puckers or anything like that. So just the same this time, I'm going to stop short. Just because what I want to then do is exactly the same trim on my threads. Does take a little bit of time, doesn't it? Um, then I've got to pull it through again, so it's just easier to say peeky boos and then start pulling it. And don't panic because you do when it's a big garment, you do start panicking. And when it's then just keep pulling and keep pulling, and there we have a nice, lovely bagged out combined facing where it's on on the fold on the front and the back then we just need to join the garment so you might have a side zip a buttonhole fastening which would normally go in the left so you'll be able to deal with all of that that's my front where it's gone up so as worn I would have all my fastenings on the left hand side so you can put zips in and things if you are putting a zip in definitely do it this way so then you can do that nice bagging out with facing with a concealed zip and i've got another video for that so just remember things like that um so that's really nice so then we just have to deal with joining the side seams so on the one the first one i did where it's sewn right to the end you remember keep that facing flipped out i push the seam allowances to the facings um so pop a pin in there to hold those in place and i always pin both ends and then ease fabrics in the middle don't just pin one end then start sewing and then go oh it doesn't fit on the other end because the feed dogs can like, pull the fabric up a little bit something like that so start at one end and then it will probably ease in when you sew it join your side seam so this was the first one that I sewed where we went right to the edge and you're going to sew the bodice and then stop on pivot on that seam line on that sewing line come round take pins out you shouldn't sew over pins obviously I haven't done any seam neatening you don't need to see, worry about seam neatening on the um, inside these edges because they're not going to be brushed or worn but this outside edge you could then seam neaten and obviously the side seams would need to be seam neatened so that then finishes and we can apply all the under stitching and I've not got too much of a step there so you can do that accurately this one as I say it enables you to put zips in and things if you don't sew right to the edge so the one where I haven't sewn right to the edge I will just join the side seams of the facing first I will join the garment side seams so this is where you could put your zip in or button for high front something like that okay and then doing it that way it then always trim those annoying threads can't do it quickly then doing it this way you've got a gap on that underarm 
All right, so you then just need to whiz and finish off down that underarm afterwards. But this means this way you could then do that understitching right across that side seam. Obviously, you would press this before you do that. Press the seams open, make it really nice. So doing it the second way means that the understitching can go right round the armhole. And it's a much nicer finish. So we'll just go back over the top. And it gives you that, make sure they're pressed open, match them all up. Da -da -da. Just have music playing right now. Going round your curves. But because this second way I've got that and it's nice and finished on that armhole, that will enable me to do my understitching all in one. Whereas the last, the other one, you won't be able to understitch because the seam goes up and over. So I will give that a press, I will do the understitching and then I will come and show at the end the video of it all finished. But that is the bagging out of the burrito where you go across where there's no where it's on the fold front and back. But I will do add some photos once I've pressed it on. So this is it all finished with its understitching and then seam neatening around the edge and you can just hold those down with a stitch in the ditch. And then if I turn it the right way, I've got a nice garment. And you can see that the understitching keeps it rolled so it doesn't show and it holds it down. your facing.